What does it take to nourish a queen, specifically the longest reigning British monarch in history? If you've ever been curious about the culinary choices of royals, then we have a delicacy of a tale for you. Today, we're turning the royal cookbook pages to explore the daily dining habits of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. Despite her extraordinary status, the Queen's food preferences often reflected a charming simplicity and tradition. We'll unfold the culinary narrative of what graced the royal breakfast table, the Queen's choices for lunch, her afternoon tea favourites, and the meals that marked the end of her day. We'll also unveil the special treats she enjoyed, the foods she steered clear of, and the influence these choices had on British dining culture. To start her day, Queen Elizabeth favoured a simple yet nourishing breakfast. While you might expect a royal breakfast to be an extravagant affair, the Queen's morning meal was delightfully straightforward. She often started her day with a pot of Earl Grey tea, made without milk or sugar, and a few biscuits. Following this, she would usually have a bowl of cereal, preferring brands like Special K or Corn Flakes, often served in a plastic yellow Tupperware bowl. Yes, even a queen appreciates the practicality of Tupperware. On certain days, she would opt for a slightly more indulgent breakfast, such as scrambled eggs with smoked salmon and a grating of truffle. But interestingly, this was more of an exception than the norm. In fact, one unique tradition was that she would only eat fruit that was in season and perfectly ripe. Her Majesty's preference for simplicity and seasonal produce reminds us that sometimes the most satisfying meals are the ones that keep things uncomplicated and close to nature. As we move into the afternoon, the Queen's lunch and tea time continued the theme of simplicity and tradition. For lunch, she often enjoyed something light yet nutritious, such as grilled fish with spinach or cold jets. Occasionally, she might indulge in a traditional British dish like lamb with mint sauce. The main course was usually followed by a simple dessert, often a piece of fruit, but the culinary highlight of the Queen's day was arguably the quintessentially British tradition of afternoon tea. She had a well-known penchant for tea sandwiches, with her favourites reportedly including cucumber, smoked salmon, egg and mayonnaise, and ham and mustard. These would be accompanied by warm scones, served with jam and clotted cream, a selection of cakes, and of course, a pot of tea. Among the sweet treats, the Queen had a fondness for chocolate biscuit cake and a classic Victoria sponge. This meal was not just about nourishment, it was a cherished daily ritual, an echo of the grand tea parties of the Victorian era in the Queen's own private setting. As evening fell, the royal dinner table bore witness to a variety of meals, reflecting both the Queen's personal tastes and the seasonal offerings of the British landscape. For dinner, she often favoured dishes that were comforting and rooted in tradition. Game, caught on the royal estates, would often feature in these meals, prepared in ways that celebrated British culinary heritage. Roast beef, venison, pheasant, these were some of the Queen's preferred choices, usually accompanied by vegetables from the royal garden and followed by a simple dessert, such as strawberries or peaches in season. It's also worth noting that the Queen had a unique dining tradition when it came to her dogs. Yes, her beloved gorges were known to be fed meals that were cooked and served by the royal chef, and it's said they dined at the same time as the Queen. This unique dining tradition adds a charming and personal touch to the Queen's dinner routine, highlighting the blend of majesty and homeliness that defined her personal style. Beyond her main meals, the Queen also had a few favourite snacks that she'd enjoy throughout the day. Known for her disciplined eating habits, the Queen's snacks were usually light and healthy. Her favourites included nuts, especially almonds and cashews, which were always on hand in the royal living quarters. She also enjoyed simple sandwiches with fillings like tuna or cucumber, and these could be prepared for her on short notice. Interestingly, it is said that the Queen had a particular way of eating her sandwiches. They had to be cut into small squares or fingers, without the crusts. The Queen was also partial to a slice of chocolate biscuit cake, 
and it's been reported that she'd have the cake follow her around until it was finished if she hadn't eaten it in one location. Even between meals, the Queen's snacks reflected her preference for simplicity, her disciplined approach to eating, and her fondness for certain treats. During state dinners and special occasions, the Queen's dining choices would take on a more formal and elaborate character. These meals typically consisted of four courses, an appetizer, a fish course, a meat course, and dessert. The menus were curated with great care to reflect the season and occasion, showcasing the best of British produce. One dish that was often served at state dinners was Gallic steak, a tender fillet cooked in a creamy whiskey sauce, a nod to both British and Scottish culinary traditions. As for the dining etiquette at these events, it was steeped in protocol. The Queen would start and finish each course, with guests expected to follow her lead. Conversation, too, had its rules, with a guest of honour seated to the Queen's right and conversing with her during the first course, while the guest to her left would engage with her for the second course. Let's move on to something a bit sweeter, the Queen's preferred drinks and desserts. The Queen was known for her moderate drinking. She reportedly enjoyed a glass of champagne in the evening, particularly brands like Bollinger, Lanson and Krug. One unique tradition was her afternoon gin and de bonnet, a cocktail made with gin and a sweet wine-based aperitif, served over ice with a slice of lemon. As for desserts, the Queen had a soft spot for chocolate. Chocolate mousse, chocolate ganache, chocolate perfection pie. If it had chocolate in it, it was likely to meet with royal approval. Yet, in keeping with her disciplined approach to eating, these treats were enjoyed in moderation. Despite her position, the Queen had surprisingly few dietary restrictions, but she did have certain preferences that guided her culinary choices. She was known to avoid starchy foods like pasta, rice and potatoes when dining alone. And while she enjoyed most types of vegetables, she had a strong dislike for garlic and overly spicy foods, which were therefore kept off the royal menu. On the other hand, the Queen had a known fondness for game, fresh fruit and, of course, chocolate. These preferences reflect a balanced approach to eating, a blend of indulgence and restraint that added another layer of character to her fascinating life.